When I first started this channel, I was fully focused on tutorial based content, and that was when I was still learning the game. Bruh. Now, years later, I can confidently say I have a lot more that I can explain, which is why I'm starting this new how to series. With an editing team behind me and a lot more knowledge of the game and its mechanics, I will be covering different mechanics with more depth and hopefully in a much easier way for you to understand. So if there is something you would like me to cover, please feel free to let me know in the comments. The first mechanic is one everyone always asks about. Today, we cover air dribbles. Realistically, you could air dribble from anywhere. And when you fully understand air dribbling and aerial car control, you can air dribble from anywhere. However, there are limitations when you are first learning. So for those who are just starting out, I suggest we start around the halfway mark. This makes sure that you're picking up the big boost pad as you start, which is going to give you an easier time and more boost. So, when starting the setup, you want to take the ball to the side wall around the halfway mark. The goal is to keep your speed fast enough that the ball will make it up the wall a decent amount, but not too fast that it's going to fly up and hit the ceiling after you touch it. The other thing to note is while you first roll the ball up the wall is the angle of the approach. Your goal here should be to angle the ball so that it is traveling up the wall as well as towards the goal. That way it is already traveling in the right direction and you're getting some height. The last thing to make sure you are doing during the setup is to be moving the same speed as the ball. This way you're going to stay nice and close to it and you aren't going to launch the ball into the air with too much speed. When first making contact to send the ball into the air, you want to make sure you are hitting the ball with the nose of your car. This is important as it helps you with getting a clean contact with the ball and making sure you can direct it where you want it to go. Hitting the ball with one of the corners of the car can still direct the ball, but it has a higher risk of messing up and sending the ball off course. As for when to make the first contact, you should be aiming to hit the ball just a split second after it passes the banner that runs horizontally along the wall. Now you can boost into the ball if you think it isn't traveling fast enough to get some decent height, or you can simply drive into it if you think you're already going fast enough. But this does take some trial and error in order to understand around about what speed you should be going during this first contact. After hitting the ball, your main priority should be to try and catch up to the ball as fast as possible. If you're quite far away from the goal, you may want to jump straight away in order to maintain your speed. Whereas if you are closer, around the halfway mark, you can afford to wait half a second and take your time. But you don't have to, you can still jump off straight away in order to maintain speed for a faster air dribble. When coming off the wall, there are three ways to go about reaching the ball. No air roll, slight air roll, and fully air rolling. The best way, in my opinion, is to slightly air roll to face the goal. The easiest way to go about this is to hold normal air roll just after you jump and then pushing the analog stick either to the left or the right, depending on which wall you're going on. While I think that it's the easiest way to do things, the way that I personally do it is a little different. And that's just because I've been doing it this way for a while, but it does follow the same kind of idea. When I go off the wall, I tornado spin using air roll left. Now on the left wall, this just means that my car turns to face the ball immediately, but on the right wall, it does one full turn before facing the ball. It might not be the most effective approach, but it is something I've done for a long time and so it's what I'm used to. By only slightly air rolling and moving the nose of your car to face the ball immediately, you allow yourself to start boosting towards the ball straight away, which is going to help you get there closer than if you were trying to constantly tornado spin. Now, tornado spinning can still be used, and I still use it all the time out of habit, but this is for those of you who are learning. Stick to just using manual air roll for the first moment coming off the wall. You can work your way up into tornado spinning over time, but once again, this is gonna be a trial and error thing. Once you learn the motion of turning your car to face the ball, it will very quickly become an easy thing for you to do. Next is the make or break. There is a very, very easy way to make sure that you keep control of the ball in the air. And this is normally the point that many people mess up when they're learning. As you're approaching the ball in the air, you want to make sure you are matching the speed of the ball, as this ensures that you don't send the ball flying away from you. But in that split second before you get that touch on the ball, that first touch, let go of boost. If you let go of boost when you first connect the nose of your car to the ball while in the air, it allows you to get a soft control touch and keeps the ball either on your nose or very, very close to your car, which makes it a lot easier for you to control the ball afterwards. This is often the reason why when you see high level players air dribbling, it can look like the ball is glued to their car. The soft touch puts the ball on the nose and then whenever they boost from there, they're simply boosting with the ball and guiding it rather than boosting and hitting the ball moving into it. Now, when it comes to where you should be making contact with the ball, in order to get a nice controlled air dribble, 
you want to be making contact in the bottom half of the ball at a sort of 45 degree angle. This is kind of like the sweet spot. Just low enough that you're still lifting the ball up and just high enough that you're pushing the ball towards the goal. This one is going to be one of the harder parts to get down as you're going to need enough aerial car control that you can make sure you get your car into the right position in the short amount of time you have in the air between hitting the ball off the wall and the moment the ball starts dropping. Speaking of that, you have to make sure you are making contact before the ball starts to drop. Ideally, you would make contact while the ball is at its peak as this gives you the most time in the air and with no downward force. This first contact will be the whole reason as to whether or not your air dribble goes well. A good first contact and you will have complete control over the ball. A bad first contact and you'll be constantly chasing after the ball trying to regain control. Now when first learning this, take your time to understand each little part of it and don't get discouraged if you can't get it down at first as it is going to take time. The last section is all about the control. Once you have made that first contact with the ball, you are now sitting in the sweet spot just underneath it and it's sitting nicely on the nose of your car. All it's left to do is to boost to carry it towards goal. But it's not that easy. This part is where you players that are learning will probably spend the most time. This is where all of the hours go. The carry and control is very, very situational. The amount of boost you have to use if you start at the halfway line is different to the amount of boost you have to use if it's a full field air dribble. You also have to take into account how much boost you start with, your momentum, if you have to carry the ball over any defenders, if you need to take the ball higher or drop it faster to get around a player. This part of the mechanic has lots and lots of variations. But when starting off, your main goal should be to first focus on just carrying the ball into the net and then working on carrying it into the top two corners. To work on this, you can either jump into free play or a training pack. Now, personally, I think free play will always be the better way to train air dribbles as it's gonna give you a more natural setup. But if you are really struggling, then jump into a training pack. The code for the pack will be linked in the description of this video. While in either free play or a training pack, a little drill that you can try is to just try and carry the ball all the way into hitting the backboard. You want to work towards hitting the backboard because once you do that, you should easily be able to get the ball into the goal as it's going to take you less boost. Now, while carrying the ball, make sure you are feathering the boost and not holding it. Holding boost while trying to air dribble is the same as holding boost while trying to dribble on the ground. Yes, your car gets faster, but so does the ball and eventually it's just going to fall off the front and you will lose control. In order to maintain control in the air, you want to make sure you feather your boost just enough that it keeps the ball on top of the car, but also generates enough speed to send you towards the net. It's a fine line, and so, once again, this part takes a lot of time. But with that, once you throw all of those parts together, you've done it. If you follow each of these steps, work on them one at a time, put in the hours, go over everything, working through trial and error, and being dedicated enough to stick with it even when it seems impossible, you will very quickly learn how to air dribble. And I say that because I was just like you at one point. I put in my hours and I trained whenever I could, and now I'm completely comfortable with the mechanic. I know some players are looking for the just do this one thing and nail it every time, but I, I wish I could give you that, but I honestly can't. It it's one of those things, it's a mechanic, and a lot of high level mechanics have the same problem where you need to put in the hours to get the muscle memory down to get a feel for the mechanic so you can work your way through it. It's not just this do this one thing, press this one button, hit this one goal. You need to put in the time, you need to understand where you're making mistakes and where you're going right in order to know what you need to work on next, in order to know how to perfect the mechanic. So, I hope this helped you out. Once again, if there is a specific mechanic or anything you want covered in a video, please let me know. I will be going over things like resets and everything more in depth in my videos from years ago, so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And if you're new, feel free to subscribe to keep up to date with all the new videos coming out soon. Anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you next time.